Good afternoon. Today I'm going to show you how to make these little zipper pulls. Zipper pulls or bag decorations, they can be used for many different things and there is many ways to make, to make them also. I have the materials collected and you will need also, if you're going to do this at home, collect a few things to be able to make these. First of all, you need some fabric. Cotton fabric's probably the best. Uh, it can be two coloured fabric, one on one side, one on the other. Uh, you will need um, some matching thread uh, to sew. Uh, hand stitching thread, needles, and some wax cotton cording. Okay, this is wax cotton cording. It comes in different thicknesses, and depending on what you're making, uh, you would you can use different thicknesses in um, in your project. I like to have a fine one millim. I think it's one millimeter. Um, with uh, wax cotton cording for this work. It's extremely strong. It will not break with your hands and can be actually stitched through. Okay. So you would cut a piece around about nine inches long or 23 centimeters if you're a centimeter person and put that aside ready to go. Now I have my project in different stages. So you can see um, what it is from cutting out to almost finishing. But what is also useful for you making this project are uh, templates. Uh, templates, plastic templates, um, cardboard templates, that you can pin onto your fabric. Uh, a lot of the time I use plastic templates. Uh, you can actually make these as circles as well, as or discs uh, rather than a shape. But the shapes, um, in this case a pentagon, and in this case a hexagon, this being six size, sides, makes it easier to do the sectioning off, and this being the sectioning off, of your flower. Okay, the other things you will need to complete this um, project uh, is stuffing, a little bit of fibre fill stuffing. And of course, one of the most important things is your needles. People ask me what needles I use to stitch and I have personally found that uh, sashiko needles for lots of things, as well as sashiko, uh, are good to sew, use as a general sewing needle. So in this case, I'm using when you um, have a multi uh, packet, multi size packet of needles, you get a couple of quite small needles with a small eye. And I like to use those in my general sewing work. As you can see here, that is a, a small sashiko needle. Okay, so let's get started. If you were going to make just one, obviously, you would just need to cut a pair of, in this case, pentagons, which are five-sided. And you can cut them out with your um, template and then mark in the corners where quarter inch is from the cut edge. Now this gives you a good indication where your seam allowance is and you will stitch on that. So you can actually draw that seam allowance in with a quarter inch ruler, which looks like this. And you will get then a line to stitch on. For some people that's a lot very helpful to stitch stitch straight okay next step is to get your cord and tie it in a knot okay as i said before it's around about nine inches and i tie that in a knot at the end this is very very strong 
and does come in different thicknesses but I, for this project I prefer the nice fine one so I hope you can see that I'm tying that in a knot pull it tight and you now have a loop okay this loop is now sandwiched inside your little flower your um, zipper pull flower at one side it doesn't matter which which edge it is but one edge and then I put a pin in to hold it so it sits with the knot out the other side where the loop is can be any side that's exactly sort of opposite here or here obviously it can't really be there so here or here so have that sort of sticking out like that and then what you're going to do is sew around this area with a running stitch and make sure you've got a knot in the end of your um, thread so I put a knot in the end of this which is already there and I'm going to stitch around now running stitch is you, you could call it tacking as well just make sure that that's nice and even you could call it tacking but every fourth stitch I will do a back stitch now this is just a bit of re insurance you could say so I'll come out there and then put a back stitch okay continue on until you get to the first dot which is here keep it nice and flat and you can see I'm sewing on this this quarter inch line which makes it very quick and easy to complete your seam and I tend to move the fabric more than the needle as you can see me doing that uh, and it I fold it onto the needle and that gives me I'll better do the back stitch that gives me uh, an even stitch rather than move the needle around okay get to that corner now the pin is if the pins in your way a little bit where this is you can move it down out of the out of your way but still leave it in there because we need to know that the knot is pretty well in the middle of that side and it is sticking out because we're going to make sure that that knot is sandwiched into this edge okay now when i get to the knot i make sure that i either sew through that cord as i mentioned before you can actually sew through it with a nice sharp needle or at least wrap a few stitches around where the cord sits you can see it better on that side my stitching line and then you continue on to this corner okay about four stitches so I do a back stitch and then continue on and then when I get four sides done I leave this one open and this is how we're going to turn this through to the right side that pin can now go okay so i'm almost here almost at this little dot that i had put in represented quarter inch and so i do a stitch on top of itself this stops this area loosening off and i leave the thread attached okay i now gently pull on the cord this also will tell you if your cord is in nice and strong into your little pentagon in this case and this this technique is is pertains to all shapes whether it's a hexagon an octagon which is eight sides or even a circle you just leave a little gap with the circle okay pull it through to the right side and then with the assistance of a chopstick 
because chopsticks are good that they've got a nice blunt end so you won't poke them through the little corners now you might have noticed i didn't clip my corners on this like we do in dressmaking and you don't really need to it's 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 not a big enough seam to worry and you can still get a nice sharp corner here as you poke out with your um chopstick okay so just put that one out a bit now you what you will have now is a end here that's not sewn at all so what i do now is i poke this stitch through to the right side okay poke it into something so you don't lose it and now what i'm going to do is stuff that so here's one I've done before. Using your chopstick, this is all now ready to join up. Using your chopstick and a bit of fibre fill. Chopstick is very useful for stuffing. Push it, the fibre fill, slightly in and then with the chopstick, whether you use the, the, the bigger end, push that in to your little piece. Okay, now you'll need probably quite a bit, um, considering it's only small, but um, it seems to take quite a little bit of fibre fill. Now the sizes I'm working with today are around about two, get my tape measure, two and a half inches from point to point. Okay. Uh, or in this case, a hexagon, which is the ones that you were shown at the beginning, is two inches from point to point. But really, they can be made any size that you need them to be within reason. Obviously, you don't want them enormous, but uh, depending on where they're going to go. I think it's all degrees of scale of size here. Okay, so when you have stuffed this sufficiently, this little um, flower, turn in your raw edges. And remembering your thread is still attached, turn in your raw edges like so. And if it's nice, it'll do as it you want it to. And crease it. Crease it where the turn is, like so. You can pop a little pin in there if you wish to, just to um, make it behave itself. Just in this corner here, I'll just put a pin in there. And just make sure that you're still turning in the quarter inch. And this is so your sides will be even. So you'll be able to tell that when you put the pin in. So if you've turned in too much, this side will end up being quite long and you'll know that that was way too much. So you'll need to bring it out a bit. Or the other way, if you've not turned in enough, this side will be a bit um, smaller. So now what we're going to do is ladder stitch uh, the, the edge close. And that's an invisible stitch rather than over and over and over. Ladder stitch jumps from side to side. Uh, you need one th thread. So from that side to that side, it's also called mattress stitch. And this, move the pin because your hands will keep it in place. This will, will, will join these two folded edges or neat edges together by the thread being placed inside the fold of the fabric and slid across and you're going from side to side and if you do this correctly after a bit of practice you could actually use even a contrast thread and you should not be able to see where you've stitched okay so let's get to the end of that okay now the fun begins because this is a blank canvas now. It is a form 
it has shape it is a form but it's pretty ordinary and pretty pretty boring and pretty blank as you can see it's just a blank shape so this is where your creativity comes into play and your imagination so i always love to do them different every time i'm just burying the end of that thread now I like to do them differently every time because they make them individual. And again, it just depends on where it's going to be used. A zipper pull or it's um, just as a decoration that you might want them. So I'll just cut that off. Like so. And now I should really put that back in my needle book you should not put your needles in a pin cushion they will disappear okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to section this off and this makes it into the petals shape that you see here Look on that side might be easier as you can see there and then you have a middle as well so you can use beads you can use um, knots, uh, you can do one single ornate bead to have in the centre. It's only limited by your imagination. Okay, so what I have done in this one and what I'm going to show you today is the application of silk ribbon. Okay, so silk ribbon, which I have dyed with indigo and dip dyed in indigo. So it's uh, very, it's, it's dark and light and very interesting i will use for this piece today now silk ribbon should you should always use a chenille needle okay a chenille needle is very much like a tapestry needle except it's sharp so a tapestry needle is blunt at the point and is used for tapestry weaving and embroidery with wool an embroidery that that is very open and you don't want to um, prick your finger with the needle but a chenille needle is usually used on very closely woven fabric but has a large eye and the beauty of that large eye is you can put almost any thread into it but you can also put silk ribbon into it as well so how you thread silk ribbon onto a tapestry needle is also very important because you need to trap that ribbon onto the needle so it doesn't come undone because it's very slippery and slidey. So this is how you do it. Thread the needle with your ribbon. As you can see, it's fairly easy to thread because the eye of your needle is large and then dab the end of the ribbon doesn't matter what side like that and pull and then the ribbon is trapped into the needle so it doesn't matter what you do with that needle it is will not come unthreaded and that's how we use silk ribbon in a chenille needle okay in the old days we also used a chenille needle for candle wicking for doing colonial knots and it was a very versatile needle for thick thread. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so firstly, we need to find the center of our blank canvas flower. Now you can, if you wish to, measure it and put either a dot or um, a, a pin mark, a little pin to show you where center is. Um, lots of us just eyeball it. In other words, we do a best guess. And if once you've done enough, that will you will just be intuitive where that middle is. You'll just see where that middle is. Okay. So firstly, I for this case because um, I'm assuming that most people haven't done this before. I'm going to put a pin in, and let's see if I did get middle because that's important too, to see that I'm not too out. Uh, yeah, just under an inch. Yep. And it should, probably should be a little bit that way. 
Yep, there we go. So that's about right. Okay, so what we're going to do is find the area that you actually stitched up your, your flower and bring in your needle, your Chanel needle, which is quite a big needle, through that point and come up into the center. Okay, feed it through and come up in the center and then you don't need that pin anymore. And then pull that through. I hold it as I'm pulling. And you can put a knot in the end of the ribbon. That's quite okay to do that. Or you can make sure you try and stab it through so you don't pull it out when you do the first rotation. But I, I prefer to give it a little knot because I'm, I don't want it to pull through. Okay, so what we're going to do is you give that a tug. You can see it came through, but it did not come through here. Sometimes it does, and you have to give it a couple of tries. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to the other side. We're going to bring the needle to the other side. I'm going to look at it and go, yep, that looks about the center. And we'll pull that because what we need to do is give it an indentation or a belly button, you could say. Okay, the knot has pulled through. So let's try and get it back in. That's all right, it's in now. Okay, and then we come up and go through the ribbon a little bit. This is to trap it and come to the other side. Okay, back and forward because we're going to give it a little indent and that... There we go makes it easier for the shape to be made. So I'll go back and forward a couple of times and you'll do this with thread too. So if you were using doing this little part with thread, you would do the same thing. So you can see this like an indent of a pillow, um, cushion or a pillow or, or a belly button and it's in the center like this. So then we're going to wrap the ribbon around each section to make the divisions like petal on a flower. As I said, the chenille needle is a really tough needle. If you have any difficulty using it, then always have a, a little pair of pliers with you. That pli pliers and uh, pointy nose pliers are one of the things I value in my sewing kit because as my hands get older and not as strong, I sometimes need them to help me. Okay, so I'm coming through this side. I'm wrapping this around. In this case, I don't really want to go through the knot so, or anything too much here. I'm sort of ne just next to, next to where I came out on that side. So I'm, pull, I'm going to pull that to make sure that I've still got the indentation on the side, okay? But we don't want to go through, oh yes, we do, yeah, we do. In this case, we do want to go through okay, through get this in the right direction we do want to go through the wax cording because that is practically the middle of that side so let's do that again now you can see okay, that's also a bit of more insurance because your cord will, will not come undone because it's trapped by the ribbon. Ribbon, silk ribbon is very pliable. And uh, so it, you can sort of really get it to mould to the shape and the thickness you want as well. Okay, we're now continuing around the outside edge, get halfway across. Again, you could measure that and put a mark if you want to, or just eyeball it just look at it and 
look at the approximate middle like this and you're keeping a bit of tension on this because you don't want this to loosen off too much okay and then through here for the final one okay there we go now the only difference you can see at this point in time is this this one has five petals it's a little larger five petals and this one has six okay and this is a little bit more rounded and this has a more pointed edge to it um rather than this one so this is more plum blossom and this is you could call cherry blossom so if you then uh, want to continue to do the middle here this could you could do middles of colonial knots colonial knots in ribbon works quite well so this is how I do colonial knots everyone does it. people do this all slightly different ways but I like to do it this way because I have full control over my thread or ribbon so I'm coming from this finger down here underneath the ribbon or thread and my needle points at the 12 on a clock. The point of it is pointing to the 12. I then tip the needle and I go under the ribbon at six o'clock on a clock. And then I come back to the middle. I This finger then pulls tight on the ribbon or thread and then goes to the other side. I'm making sure I'm in where I want to be. And I then pull that through. So this is the time when you could need your pliers when you want to try and get this through your ribbon. But we'll see how we go. There we go. And we then pull. And you will have a little knot there. Okay. Now the only thing you have to be a little careful of is a bit of fibre fill gets pulled around. I tend not to worry too much about it until I'm finished. And then I tidy it up and get rid of that bit of fibre fill. You should be doing it all day if you worry too much about it at this point in time. So underneath, underneath, in, pull on, on the ribbon to tighten it up if you need to be. And now I'm on the reverse side. So I would fill up the centre uh, with little knots. And sometimes I fill the centre up with knots and beads okay okay so i'll do a couple of those either side and then we'll move on to what i do with beads underneath underneath and come to the other side there we go that and I'll have two knots on that side and two knots on that side so far so I'll do one more either side and then we will change to the beads now obviously you can do this looser if you want to if you wanted to do your knots a little looser so they're a bit more obvious and if you do that means you you don't pull this as tight and you will have a looser knot as in this one which is a little looser like that so you can see they're starting to take some form and some shape yeah, there's some fluff and i'll do a final one here and then i'll show you what i do to end this off okay and get on to some beads right All right, so what I'm going to do now, now they're in place, I will m put my needle back into where I've come out and bury this little piece of ribbon into the fibre fill area. There, like this. Like that. And then I'll cut that off. Okay, so if you want to put beads on so again beads are an enormous um, variety in this case i've used this tiny little black 
uh, sh quite shiny beads. I prefer glass beads. They give you a nicer look. They're stronger and they are permanent. And you can always tell glass beads. They should have it on them when you, when you buy it. But they also feel a bit colder than um, plastic beads. They're, they're a lot more durable. You can get all different qualities of beads. So I think you have to be mindful of that. So depending on what your budget is, you should be able to find most um, beads for what you need. Okay, we'll just give this a little clear away. I use um, Bowen um, bead needles, which are here, and they're French needles, and I find these wonderful needles. And the reason why I use them is because they're a shorter needle, and I, I don't tend to bend them. I don't know if you if you are beaders out there. Uh, I, I don't know. It, the very, very fine beading needles, uh, almost like a, 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 um, a hair, uh, I actually even bend them, can break them. But these ones I don't tend to, and I have a lot more control. For me, a needle is a tool, and it, I treat it as a tool. So it becomes the uh, how I pick up beads as well with this needle. And this needle is very, it's very sharp as well. The eye is a good size eye. It's not too small. And I also use beading filament which in this case is called Nymo, Nymo thread, N-Y-M-O, and it comes on reels that look like this, thousands of metres on there, or hundreds of metres at least. And I have quite a few colours, but they last you a long time. And I, your most universal colour is like a, um, it's all like a champagne colour. It tends to blend in with most things. But I'm using a dark colour today so you can see what I'm doing more than anything. Okay, I'm also going to now bury the knot, you knot your Noma inside the seam allowance of my flower in here. So put it in there so we can't see any knots and give it a pop. And if you're, if you're good at doing this, it will pop through. Sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it just goes instantly inside and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, in that case, pull too hard. So you just try again. Okay. So I'm going to the little tips. In this case, it should pull through this time because there we go. You heard that little pop. And that was it sinking inside the fabric layers. Okay, so my first stitch though is through the top here to make sure that it's fully secure. And I've got some little beads here. And I'm going to use the gunmetal colour here, these ones here. Always try and keep your beads on a saucer. It's better than getting them out of a bottle. Out of a bottle is just too difficult. I picked up a bead onto my needle and then I'm sewing this through to the top like so, making sure the bit, the bead will sit on that top area like so. And then I feed the needle through until I can feel it coming out at the next top point. so and then doing another holding stitch at the top here and then pick up with my needle so I don't have to use my fingers to do that and go through sometimes I go through a second time depends on the bead uh, like so and sometimes I don't it depends on how I feel at the time okay now bury it and come up at the next point making sure that you don't pull these out of shape you don't want to pull those out of shape and make them sink in so do another stitch on top of itself there and that will stop that happening and then pick up another bead with your needle and then continue around in this case we'll have five little points and 
And that really emphasizes the little points of this flower. As you can see. And over to this one. Exactly the same as before, burying it in the layers, do the holding stitch so it doesn't pull up the previous bead. That's very important. And then pick up another bead. Like so. I've been a bead collector for many, many years. I always say you can hide a lot of beads in a small space. Um, and I love interesting beads. You wouldn't call these particularly interesting. But if I was going to put a very interesting bead on this flower, I'm going to do the holding stitch here, I would have it in the center. So the center bead, as I'm doing the last one now, uh, is the one that draws your eyes. So if you were doing this maybe on a circular piece of fabric, uh, which you don't have then points, as you can see here, then it's nice to put a really lovely feature bead in the center. So in this case here, on this one, I put a uh, a piece of semi-precious stone. It's um, I think it's rose quartz and stone with another holding bead on the top of it. And this is a circle, as I mentioned before. It has no real points at the sections, but uh, I put this one in because it was an interesting uh, bead. Uh, I have this one here which is a hexagon and it has a little flower bead in the center. So I chose not to do any pointed beads here. Instead, I put a flower bead in the center. And then what I did was glove stitch the edge for a, a, another feature. So that's another alternative. As I mentioned, I do this different every time I do it, only because, you can more than anything you can there's nothing to stop you okay so now i've done my last bead there i now will feed my needle into the center area squash it down a little bit so you can get hold of the needle and that final bead is there don't pull it too tight as you'll pull in that edge and then do a little stitch there to stop that happening. Now, I, as I mentioned before, sometimes I combine knots with beads. As I said, it's just because you can. No other reason. And I will then pick up again these beads going back and forward through the middle of the flower attaching beads as I go so and you can really put as many as you like there is no rules and I could um, change the color I could um, put some pink ones in and whatever you want to do backwards and forwards just be make sure you've got your loop out of the way of course, when you put your loop in, you test it. But in this case, we've got a bit of double insurance here because our ribbon went through it. And if you were using thread as well, um, it could also go through your loop of your cord as well. And that would also give you insurance. So your, your uh, wax cotton cord could never fall out. So I'm just going to go backward and forward. And this then will be as finished as I want it to be. And I mentioned will be, always look different to any other ones that I've made before. So so capping off, we're nearly done now. I would um, now bury that thread inside 
the flower. I pulled it around a little bit to straighten it off because it's been battered around a little bit. Uh, like so. And as I said, then bury this thread inside your fabric and that's more or less finished. So I'll put it in there so you can have a look. Capping it off, um, you need just a bit of your time. The most important thing I feel, it can be any fabric you choose to use. But the most important thing is, I feel, is this cord. Uh, I, for many years, was looking for suitable cord to do this type of work. And I was lucky enough to find it in Japan, firstly. But I do now have quite a good supply of it. Mainly in blue and black. It does come in other colours as well, but I, I do have blue and black in um, my little shop. Um, I also have the needles if you're after different needles as well. But these really, these flowers can be done with scrap, uh, with anything. If you're making a bag and you've got a particular colour fabric in that um, in that bag, you might have some scrap of it, make it from that so it all gels together and becomes one thing so this is as i said this is the bag i made with two um two on the end and this cord is thicker now the reason this cord is thicker is all to scale um the bag is bulkier the bag is bigger so the scale of your cord is thicker and that just follows um, with what you do. It means that these could have been bigger, but no, I'm okay with them being smaller. And I didn't. I just used thread to section off my sections here. Put another another bag here, also a square bag. And I just have one hanging from the front of my bag here. Just a little plain blue one, which I put inside. Uh, it's just inside the casing there for the for the the drawstring at, uh, and the drawstring actually hasn't got them in, on at all in this case so I just wanted to put one on there and this was also a circle of fabric not not a pentagon or a hexagon but uh, as I mentioned you could actually do them any shape you like you could even do a triangle if you felt you wanted something really, really different. You'd have three points to it and you would section it off between. So who knows, might do that in our next um, little tutorial. Uh, how the application for necklaces out of these little, little fabric flowers is a little different. And so keep a lookout for a tutorial uh, next time uh, on how to make these into uh, a piece of uh, fabric jewellery. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching and hope to see you again at um, Bitten by the Bug Stitching.